This is the weekly lesson for study until 21st of July 2024. Subject My mate Karim. Sometimes I forget how diverse British culture is because I just go with the flow. I don't really have any hard and fast views of what a British man is supposed to look or act like. So when my mate Karim appeared one night back in 2006, telling me his mother finally found someone for him to marry, it didn't come as any great shock. We came from different backgrounds, but we simply didn't care. We were very good friends. He started by telling me how he was a little bit nervous about his forthcoming marriage. He had agreed that his parents would find a bride and that the wedding would take place in the town where his grandparents had immigrated to the UK from back in the 1960s. We are like chalk and cheese, he said, referring to himself and his future wife. Then he told me his great idea. Why don't we fly to Pakistan together and you can get married too, he suggested. I could see he had a look of desperation in his eyes. He didn't want to face this alone. Thanks, I replied, but that's not really workable for me and nervously laughed at what I hoped was a joke. I had seen that look before. I always thought of it as the kind of look a deer gets before it gets struck by a car in the middle of the night. It really is game over, he continued. Karim was just as British as I am, and culturally, he pushed himself to enjoy everything he could. A sportsman, popular with the ladies, and one of these guys who always had a friend, cousin or uncle, who was ready to offer any kind of deal that you might be after. I've had enough British-born Pakistani friends in my life to know that there was no way out of this for him and he had been preparing for this moment for some months. He considered himself lucky that he knew the girl. It was one of his cousins, although I could never really figure out how they were related. They were cousins, but five times removed, and he barely knew her. I considered Karim to be very fortunate because... He walked between two worlds, which left his mind open in a way few people reach. By day, he was very much living up to his parents' high expectations of Islamic Southeast Asian living, and by night, he was the disco king, with a childlike determination to achieve everything Western living could offer, until 1 a.m. most weekends. He was able to merge the two ways of life without going insane, and without the usual crutches young white men rely on, drugs and alcohol. Mixing with Kareem introduced me to a lot of places and people where alcohol was not at the forefront of people's minds. I had almost the same conversation with my Chinese friend, although he came to Britain in the 1990s to study and eventually stayed. There was a moment when his parents simply advised it was time to marry, and he went scurrying off to China. He also maintained that look of fear which he tried to hide behind a kind of 
masculine persona. Karim had certain qualities that I never found in my own peer group. Loyalty, friendship, brotherliness, and in many ways he was more of a brother to me than my own brother was. I often wished I was half the man he was, yet he faced discrimination, judgment, intense expectations from his kin and from the society that we live in. The difference between his life and mine was that he came from a community, a network of people who loved and supported him, yet he wanted to be independent. Like most British people, I was taught not to expect help from people and to make the best of what I can achieve alone. I had independence, but was seeking community. I was invited to his British wedding celebration. He arrived on a white horse dressed in Indian clothes with photographers surrounded by his family, and I was reminded again how different culturally we are. His wedding had 300 people. In contrast, at my wedding there were four, me, my other half, and two witnesses, and even one of them I didn't know personally. My parents had long since passed away, and there was no one else in the family I keep in touch with. In his words, arranged marriage isn't that bad. You just fight for six months, then you learn to live with each other. Karim moved to the Emirates, I moved to Spain, and we kind of found what we wanted. Some sense of knowing more about who we are, to be British, was to be a global citizen in the 1990s, but by today's standards, I'm not sure that's the message the next generation are receiving. With borders closing, Brexit, crimes rising and attitudes changing, Karim says he was right to move, to raise his family in a place where he knows they will be in a diverse atmosphere. After all, diversity is the one true thing we all have in common. As extreme political views ebb closer to the front in politics, the gap between those of us who want a diverse mixed culture and those of us who don't is widening. There's obviously people here who feel that being British means something else. Maybe Karim, my Chinese friend, and many others never got that email.